All right, appreciate everybody joining us today. We have quarterback Sean Clifford with us. Um, as always, please raise your hand. I'll call on you. Let's start with Elton Hayes, CNHI. Go ahead, Elton. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Sean. Hope you're all doing well. Hey, Sean, earlier, uh, seems just like a few months ago, we were talking about Parker Washington coming into this wide receiver room and really impressing and turning heads as a uh, true freshman player. Um, he's really emerged in that passing offense and um, has helped you guys out a lot. Just wanted to ask you and get your observations on him as we have one game left in the regular season and which ways that you've kind of seen him uh, progress and, and, and develop in the most. Yeah, I think that Parker makes it pretty exciting just because, like, people always forget that I didn't throw to to Parker, Keandre, um, like, Jaden Dot. Like, I didn't throw to – a, a few of our like starting guys until when was it like late July. So to, to see like those guys, it's like, especially Parker, but like Keandre doing well too, like stepping up. I think that it's, it's, it's key for the development of not only like our offense, but the team, because I mean, those guys are helping us out a lot. And with, extremely limited reps and time practicing with them, not really having any hands-on time with uh, how quarantine went. I think that it's, it bodes very well for our future. Let's go to Mark Dren and fight on stage. John, thank you for your time today. No problem. Hey, uh, can you talk a little bit about your senior class? Uh, these guys are going to be honored this weekend, and for them to keep things together and stick together through a difficult season when it probably would have been easy uh, for other people to maybe walk away, how much have they kind of meant to, to, to where you guys are now, kind of kind of getting back to where you want to be? Yeah, I think it means a lot. Um, you know, these seniors have done so much for this program, been a, so, a part of so much. Uh, a few of them have been a part of a Big Ten championship. You know, a lot of New Year's six bowls, um, guys who come in every day ready to work. Um, so especially with this year, kind of being the glue to hold everybody together um, through quarantine and COVID and then how the season's gone a little bit in the beginning. Um, I think that, you know, we've had a lot of a lot of issues and or not. I wouldn't say issues, but just a lot of adversity um, that the seniors have done a great job of using their, their, their age and wisdom um, and just kind of being the rock to, to the program. Um, so I appreciate all of them. Um, and that's why, you know, we, we, we just want to send them off the right way this week. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle. Good morning, Sean. Thanks for your time. Uh, one of those seniors is Mike Mennett. You've obviously had a good relationship with him these last years a close relationship can you describe what he's his impact on you and also what has he meant to the team the last few years yeah um well for me Mike Mena is a guy who I can always trust and at the center position you know the center and the quarterback have to be on the same page um you know he's the one ID in the fronts uh when I make a check to, in a protection I'm trusting him to get everybody on the same page um he's kind of I, I like to compare it like, I mean, a lot of people say the left tackle is uh, kind of like the quarterback's blind, blind, uh, blind side and everything. And, um, you know, I appreciate, obviously I appreciate all my offense linemen. Um, but, you know, the, the center is somebody who a quarterback talks to constantly throughout the week. We're, we're watching tape together, um, you know, and then we, and Mike and I have a great relationship off the field. Um, you know, last year he lived right across from the street from me. Um, he moved just down the street now. Um, you know, I, I always see him. We hang out, out after practice. Um, so, you know, he's one of my, you know, very good friends, uh, somebody who I have, you know, the utmost respect for, uh, trust in. And, um, you know, he's, he's somebody who I'll miss a lot. Go to Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Good morning, Sean. We appreciate your time. Um, on Saturday, you and Will were checking in and out in a way we don't usually see at that position with quarterback. Um, when it was working, those three consecutive scoring drives in the first half, what, what, was, what do you think was so effective about that method? 
And additionally, how would you and Will kind of evaluate how things went? Uh, again, it was just it was kind of a, a different look at quarterback than, than any of us are used to seeing. Yeah, I thought I thought that it went pretty smooth. Um, you know, Will and I, you know, per usual, like just for the both of us, uh, you know, Will and I are going to do whatever it takes to, to win the game. And, and that's what matters. So obviously it went well because we won the game. Like that's the, the first part of it. But, um, you know, just from an efficiency standpoint, I thought that, you know, uh, you know, when Will was in, you know, we ran the ball super well. Um, he was super efficient. Our offense moved. Um, I thought that we did good things as an offense uh, as a whole. Um, you know, we had some explosive plays, left some on the board, but, um, you know, I think that I think that we have a lot of meat on the bone and I'm, I'm just excited to see how we continue to kind of put these pieces together um, to finish the season out and then kind of catapult ourselves into next year. Go to Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Hey, Sean, good morning. Um, what are some of the things that you want to see this offense achieve these last two games of the regular season and who knows, maybe a bowl game? Uh, just continuing to get better. That's really the only thing that um, matters. Um, you know, we're winning games, which is obviously the number one stat. But, um, you know, I I think just continuing to, to progress, uh, you know, be a little bit more explosive in the past game, um, uh, be a little bit more detail oriented, uh, continuing to to push our mentality and and uh, you know grind out some of these run plays. You know we're getting way better in the running game, which is awesome. Um, so being able to grind that out, and then just you know executing overall better. Um, but I think that we've taken strides. I think it's shown. Obviously, you know we're not turning the ball over as much. I thought that last week, you know we obviously that fumble and then my interception. You know, those two things can't happen, but, um, you know, I think that we're all proud of how we're doing um, and, and, and not just giving up on the year because, you know, a lot of teams um, might have just said, you know what, it's, it's, it's whatever, we're going to move on to next year. But, uh, you know, this team has came into work every single day. It doesn't matter what's going on, uh, what anybody's saying. Uh, we're just trying to take care of our business and our business only and, I think that it's going to pay off in the end. Tobias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Um, Sean, first of all, thanks for doing this. Um, I know the, the focus is 1-0 every week, but if you guys were to get the opportunity to play in a postseason game, would you want it? If so, why Why so? Um, Yeah. I'd love to answer the question, but I, I really am just focused on this week, uh, especially, you know, you just got to, you just, you really got to have a one to no focus. Like that's one of the things that I've learned this year is, you know, you can't think ahead um, on anything really about football. Um, because football is like, you know, the ultimate humbling game. So uh, the minute that you skip something or, or um, start thinking ahead of yourself, um, that's when it's going to come and bite you in the butt. So, I'm just going to stay focused on Michigan State, keep grinding this this week, and then uh, when, you know, that question arises, uh, I'll be more than willing to answer it. Let's go to Donnie Collins, Scranton. Sorry, Donnie. Go ahead. No, no. Hey, Sean. Uh, are, you, are you at all surprised by how well Theo and, and – and Brenton have, have picked up their responsibilities in the running game. And, and, and how, how good do you think those two guys could be down the road considering, you know, the amount of playing time they got this year and, and what they've meant to the offense the last couple of weeks? Yeah, no, no, I, I haven't been surprised at all. I've, you know, I've seen it coming. Um, that room is deep. Uh, I, I've said it before uh, and I'll say it again. I mean, you know, Pat leading that group. Um, I mean, he's an all American, so you know, that's kind of like the standard. Um, and Pat does a very good job of holding everybody to that standard. So, um, you know, those guys have, have, have grinded and, and, and seen what, you know, a great tight end looks like. Um, and I think that, you know, they're both benefiting from it. You know, you gotta, you gotta take uh, the experience from the older guy and, and kind of just continue to learn from it. And they're both, they're both sponges. They, they ask questions. They're always working hard. They're always watching tape. Um, so, you know, both Brendan and Theo are, are guys that, um, 
you know, have kind of come onto the scene now and, and, you know, some people might call it a surprise, but I mean, I, I really, I think that they're both extremely talented and have all the tools. Mark Roganrich, SI.com. Hi, Sean. Just looking back over the last few months or so, what have been the, the biggest challenges of playing through a pandemic? And through all of this, has it been worth it? Um, I think that the biggest challenge is just like the, the difference in your lifestyle uh, that you have to live outside the facility. Because in the facility, I mean, you have to wear masks, you got to, you got to social distance and when you can, obviously. And then you got to, um, you know, do testing and everything. But when you're in the facility, you know, everybody's tested. They, you know, you have confidence that um, everyone's doing the right thing. But it's outside the facility that's really the, like the, the biggest change. You know, it's, the, it's your daily life. Um, it's, it's not being able to see my family, not being able to uh, go hang out with my girlfriend. It's, it's at one point I was living on my own. Um, so it's, it's, it's the little things like that, that, you know, people just don't see, um, they might, um, you know, think that we're just kind of going, going about our day, like everything's normal, but really, um, you know, there's been really nothing normal about it. Um, it's been a very interesting process to say the least, but you know, I, I, I take everything uh, as a chance and an opportunity. So I think that it's been completely worth it. You know, taught me a lot of lessons um, that I'm going to continue to, to grow on and learn on. So um, definitely appreciative of 2020. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record. Hey, Sean, do you think uh, going back to the beginning of the season, has there been anything you've learned about yourself as a quarterback, as a leader, anything you're doing differently now in those roles than maybe you did in October? Um, I wouldn't say differently. Um, I've, I've, I've learned um, how to lead through adversity more, I guess. Um, you know, it started with the pandemic and then uh, the slow start. Um, you know, I'm just not very, I'm not very used to losing. I've never been a, a, a person who loses um, my whole life. You know, high school, I won a state championship. I was always on a winning team. Uh, came in here, uh, you know, we're in the Fiesta Bowl, the Cotton Bowl. Um, Citrus Bowl, you know, we're, we're winning a bunch of games. Um, and then, you know, last year being 11 and two, I mean, losing just isn't really in my mindset. So, um, you know, I, I kind of had to learn what, what it's like. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling and it's something that, you know, I don't, I don't plan on doing um, anymore, really. I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm putting myself in the best position and my team in the best position to win. And, um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to make sure we do that. So, Rich Garcella. Sean, if you can indulge me, why do you think that Isaac Lutz has emerged the last two weeks and has been a big contributor to the offense? Um, you know, Lutz is somebody who just comes in and, and doesn't, he doesn't say much, he just grinds. Um, you know, he's somebody who I've had trust in through camp. Um, he's always been somebody who, you know, if, if he, somebody, if a, if a starter has had to come out, you know, it's never been a drop off with Lutz. Um, you know, he's, he's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, he's not the strongest, but at the same time, he's, he's somebody who you can trust on every play. He, he knows exactly where he's going. He knows how to win on routes. Um, he's, he's sneaky quick. Um, he's got great hands. Um, and then he's just, he, he's somebody like the whole trust thing. He's somebody who works all the time. So, um, you know, we're watching tape. He's in watching tape with us, making sure that the young guys are, are paying attention, um, you know, learning how to, how to watch film, how to, how to study a game plan. Um, and he's kind of just been a, a, a good spokesperson for that group. And, and, um, you know, I think that a lot of guys have a lot of respect for, Lutz just because of how hard he works, um, even when the light's not shined on him. You know, he's been a great special teams guy here, too. And I'm just happy that it's kind of working out for him now 
like on the offensive side. Um, and, you know, it's going to continue to work out for him. You know, he's, he's somebody who we see as a, a key contributor and, you know, always have, but he's kind of found his role now. Howard out of here. Sean, we had a chance to speak with Kirk Shiraka last week for the first time this season. And um, it, speaking of kind of so, some of the frustrations on offense throughout the early stages of the season, he felt like you were trying to be, quote, too perfect with things. He felt like that was an issue. And then he said he saw you trust trust what you saw a little bit more against Michigan. I don't know if that was the case against Rutgers as well, but um, – what, what would you kind of reflect on on that? Were you Did you feel like you were maybe pressing to be too perfect in an offense that you were just picking up and that w obviously wasn't a normal offseason? Just curious on, on how you, you would respond to, to Kirk's assessment of, of that being probably the biggest issue in your development in 2020. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's exactly what it is. Um, you know, I thought, you know, early on when we were, we were struggling a little bit, I thought that, I had to do things out of the box to make, to make plays for the offense, um, do things, you know, outside of the realm um, on a consistent basis. Like that in, in my mind, you know, I, I just, I just thought that, you know, if, if it wasn't there, I had to make a play. So that way, you know, we could, you know, convert a third down instead of just punting the ball, um, you know, being sloppy with the ball, having a turnover. Um, it's the little things like that where, um, you know, I was just forcing things and, and, you know, coach Rock and I talked about it and, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good to reflect on and it's good to see, um, the mistakes I made. Um, it's, I mean, I felt like, and I know it's uncharacteristic of myself. Um, you know, I'm somebody who prides myself on, on keeping the ball, you know, ball security, um, and then just being, you know, accurate with your decision-making and, um, you know, this year's taught me a lot, but I feel like I'm, I'm finally getting back to how I was, um, within, you know, coach Rocca's offense. So, um, I'm excited to just keep grinding it out and keep working toward the future here. Let's go to John Stroh. Hey, Hey, Sean, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, question for you. Um, you know, Michigan State's been a little spotty in the secondary this year. And not asking you to critique, but what, what, what do you, you know, what do you see? What do you see from those guys in general? Um, I think that I think that they're a good football team. Um, you know, they've they've had, uh, you know, they had a lot of uh, guys leave last year. Um, you know, I, obviously, I haven't had all the time to to watch them yet. You know, I had a good day yesterday, um, you know, with the wide receivers watching tape. Um, you know, they, they play a lot more man this year, um, one high. Um, so that'll be something that's a little bit of a change up from last year. You know, last year they were more of a, a two high cover four team with, with uh, you know, a lot of different fire zones that they bring. Um, but this year it's seeming like, you know, that they're, they're a little bit more one high, um, which is, you know, a change up and, and something that, you know, we're going to watch throughout the week, but um, you know, I, th I don't think that their corners are, um, you know, playing bad. I think that honestly, they're that teams are just making plays um, on them, um, you know, and that's something that we need to do, but I don't think that, you know, they have any lack of, of confidence or, or uh, ability at the secondary position. You know, I, I, from what I'm seeing, I think that it's just kind of, you know, a little bit of being at the wrong spot um, at the wrong time and, and, and not making, you know, all the plays, but at the same time, you know, I think that they have all the talent that they need. Um, so uh, they're a very, very good football team and uh, we got to be ready for Saturday. A couple more for Sean, Joe Giuliano, go ahead. Sean, I wanted to get your thoughts on your defense. Uh, they've played uh pretty much to standard the last two weeks. So what do you see in, how, in their play and, and what got them to, to this point uh, the last two weeks, you think? Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the work ethic that they've been putting in the past two weeks, you know, to make sure that the corrections are being made, uh, learning from everything they do and, and just making sure that, you know, they're being the defense that we know they are. Um, I think that they've just continually gotten better. Um, you know, and you saw it last week, Rutgers offense has been putting up points against 
you know, every team that they've played uh, throughout the Big Ten. And, you know, they get to our defense and, and we, I mean, we, we damn near shut them out. Um, if it wasn't for my turnover, I think we would have. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very confident in those guys. Uh, I say it all the time to them. Um, but it's, it's fun to just, you know, see them uh, get better just the same way that the offense is, kind of just finding their identity, uh, seeing, you know, key players step up. You know, I love seeing Brandon Smith play well, Ellis Brooks, Jesse Lucetta, uh, you know, Owe, Shaka, uh, the young guys at corner, Joey Porter, Keese, uh, Day Day, you know, and then our, obviously, you know, the, the more veteran guys at safety, you know, Lamont Wade, you know, the captain that he is having – having a, a better year now and, and uh, Brisker, um, you know, all those guys are just working so super hard, uh, constant communication throughout the program, of, you know, what we need to do to get better. And, you know, just making sure that the culture doesn't, you know, we're not lacking in the culture while the record might not reflect where we are um, as a team. You know, we, 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 we still have a lot of confidence. We're still the team that won the Cotton Bowl. So, um, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to waver from that. We got time for one more, Corey Geiger. Sean, you said earlier a lot of teams might have just said after they were struggling, maybe kind of forget about this season and start looking to next year. Why did you guys not do that? What are the one or two most important things that this team stayed focused on to not do that? Yeah, I think that it's just the character of the guys who Coach Franklin brings in. Um, I don't think that it's it's anything less. It's just it's how we're raised. Um, you know, through adversity, you know, you got a bunch of guys who um, have learned early that, you know, I'm not going to give up on my family um, and my teammates. And, and that was one thing that, you know, I, I addressed the team one time, uh, just talking about how, you know, the last thing that I'm going to do is in, in time of adversity and time where, you know, your team needs you the most is just turn your back and, and um, you know, just say, We'll, we'll catch them next year. Like, that's just not how, you know, I was raised. Um, you know, my family would be disappointed in me if, if honestly, if, if that was how I uh, responded to this adversity. So, you know, it's just taking every day, uh, you know, with a grain of salt, go, trying to be one to know each day, find, find a way to improve and, and making sure that you're holding your teammates and everybody around you accountable to that standard. Um, and I think that we've done a good job of that. Um, you know, through these tough times. So. All right. Appreciate your time today, Sean. And thanks everybody Thank for joining us.